Excellent. Okay, hey, thanks for tuning in to the Rexer Show today. We're going to go over online play using RetroArch. Now, I'm going to tailor this one to the NHL 94 online group, but this will work for anyone who just wants to play online old system games with their buddy somewhere. Uh, this is only going to work for, you know, NES, Sega, uh, Super Nintendo. You're not going to be able to use RetroArch to play PS1 online or Dreamcast, uh, you know, with Raycast or, or any of that. So you got to stick to the basic consoles when you want to play online. Now I'm using a PC with Windows, and the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure you and the player 2 that you're going to do net play with is using the same RetroArch version and the same core. Now it isn't 100% mandatory that you use the same RetroArch version or necessarily even core to some extent, but you will have an error code that says you do not have matching core slash RetroArch version that may cause problems with the net play. So you want to use the exact one, you want to use the exact core, and you have to use the exact same ROM. So you're going to need to share what ROM you're going to be using between each other, or you're going to get an error message, something to the effect of content not found. Now, to get started for the people who want to use uh, NHL 94 online and get hooked up with the guys on that Discord, uh, the first thing you're going to do is you want to want to join us on Discord. And you're going to go right here to NHL 94 online, click that, and make sure you join the room. There are a few different ways that you can play online. I'm going over the RetroArch method, and right here, you're going to want to download the RetroArch for Windows Vista 7, 8, and 10 package, and you're going to download that, you're going to extract it, and you're going to launch RetroArch. Once you have that installed and extracted, you're going to get a RetroArch 32 folder right here. You're going to open it up, and you're going to scroll down to the RetroArch EXE file, and you're either going to launch the regular one or the debug, it doesn't matter. You'll notice on the bottom here we're using 1.7.5. No core at this time has been loaded, so the first thing we're going to want to do is load the core. It should default with two cores, one SNES 9X and the other uh, Genesis Plus GX. If you want other cores, you go to Download Core and you search through the list and you download them. I've downloaded Nystopia and also SNES 9X 2005. For the NHL 94 group, we use SNES 9X for Super Nintendo games and Sega games we use Genesis plus X. So let's go ahead and pop in SNES 9X and you'll see on the bottom here we have 1.75 SNES 9X loaded. Once you have that core loaded you're going to need to decide whether you're going to use the relay server or direct port forwarding. So if we go to the network list and the refresh room list you can see most everybody here uses direct port forwarding and some use relay. I'm going to suggest you stay away from using relay server as the play is going to be choppy and laggy. Some people will say the relay server is effective and works well but my experience shows that anything above the Nintendo console uh, will give you problems in terms of gameplay. So if you're doing sports games or anything that's a little more taxing uh, where you need to be really synced up, you're not going to want to use Relay Server. But for those of you who want to try Relay Server, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Settings, down to Network, you're going to put Use Relay Server on, you're going to make sure that the host and the player connecting uses the same Relay Server location, and you can add input latency frames to improve the connection. Uh, most people use something from 1 to 3 here, but you have to make sure that both players are on the same input latency frames setting. Once you do that, we're going to need to load the ROM first. Both the host and the person connecting to the host must load the ROM first. So in this example, we're going to use NHL 94. We have the ROM loaded, and the first thing you're going to do is go into RetroArch. 
and the host is going to start NetPlay host. And you can see on the bottom it says you have joined as player one, waiting for client. Now, if we go back in and we refresh room list, you're going to see the Rexer show right here. Now, mine is direct because I have my ports forwarded and open. So I'm going to show as direct. But in this example, we had relay server turned on. Yours would show relay here. Let's assume we're on relay server and the other individual who's connecting is going to be on relay server. That individual is going to have to start their game as well first, then go into RetroArch, go and refresh room list. Then you have to find the player you want to connect to, in this example, the Rexer Show, and all you do is hit the A button. Unfortunately, this is an example where I cannot connect to myself, so you will not see me connect and say, joined as player two. When player two does connect and everything matches up and they are synced to the host, you will see it say joined as player two slash connected to Nick. Now that's the most basic way using Relay Server, which again, I say is ineffective and will not give you the best results. So let's take a look at port forwarding and getting a direct connection to the person you want to play with. In order to do that, we're going to have to open up our router for port forwarding. I'm going to put a link in the description to a website that shows multiple routers and how to do port forwarding on each router. I'm going to go into my router and I'm going to show you briefly how to open up port forwarding. I'm going to have to gray out a lot of pertinent information, but hopefully this will help. I am also going to put a link in the description of a video I did on how to port forward that will show more information on how to actually port forward your router. With a PC, you're going to have to be concerned about your firewalls. Even though you open up your router and you open up the ports, you may still need to unblock the ports by freeing up your firewall to allow somebody to access your ports. I'm going to briefly show you how to do that as well using McAfee, but if you don't use McAfee, it might be different depending on what antivirus software you have. So let's take a quick look at how to get access to your router and open up port forwarding. There are different ways you can access your router. In this example, I'm going to be opening up a browser, I'm going to enter my default gateway in the URL, and then I'm going to make sure I log in to my account. If you don't have an account, you'll have to go through the steps to create one and get into your router. Once you do that, the easiest way to open up port forwarding is going to be to enable UPnP, which stands for Universal Plug and Play. In my other video, I go over UPnP in detail, so if you want to watch that and learn about that, please do so. But for now, I'm just going to warn you that UPnP and opening it up may allow for more risk for people to access your router. UPnP opens up basically every port and allows anyone who asks to touch a port entry into that. You can determine the risk, and if, it's, if there is risk, I'll let you decide. Um, that is not the way I do it, and I'll show you in briefly the way I do it. If you do UPnP, it's very simple. Simply find where your UPnP access is, and for me it's in advanced, and down here in UPnP, and I simply turn it on like that. And that's all you really need to do at this point, besides making sure your firewall is opened to the RetroArch port, which I will go over shortly. Now, if you feel that opening up UPnP is too risky, the alternative way is to add a virtual server for each IP address and for each port. RetroArch uses port 55435 as a general rule. And that would be the port that you want to allow access to. Doing it this way only allows access to that one port, whereas UPnP allows access to any port that is requested by the other party. Now, in this menu, all I had to do was add. I had to put external and internal port as 55435, and I had to add my internal IP, which is the internal IP for the computer or laptop that you're using. 
you're also going to want to go to your network DC uh, DHCP server and you're going to want to do an address reservation simply here you just do add and you put in the MAC address and the reserved IP address which is the same laptop address you use to open up the port one quick note here if you're trying to do this wirelessly which I don't suggest I think you should always be hardwired when you're doing that play but I've been successful using wireless, um, although I do have exceptional speeds on wireless up to about 450 M MBS. That might help my situation uh, with playing wirelessly. But the IP address for wireless connection to your laptop is going to be different than the IP address for a wired connection to your laptop. So always be cognizant of that. Once you have the address reservation in, as well as the virtual server, now we go in and we check our firewall and allow the port to open through the firewall. Okay, now that we got the RetroArch part all set up and we're all port forwarded, we're going to open up our ports through our firewall and make sure that the firewall isn't blocking us. You may not have to do this or you may have to do this. I don't know every uh, different antivirus software and how it works, or maybe you're not using any at all and then you don't really have to worry at all. Uh, for me, I had to open up my McAfee uh, software. I had to go to PC security, firewall. I had to go down to ports and system services. And basically in here, I had to add a port setting. which is right here with RetroArch. And I had to open it up for all computers to be able to access 55435. Now, again, for me, this port will only be open when I am using a specific IP address, the one specific to my PC. Because of how I set up my router to only allow this PC to open up the port, and I've set the port to be opened and allowing the firewall to get through, to get through the firewall, that is the only port that will open instead of using just an open UPnP setting on my router. Once you have added that and you've opened up that port for RetroArch, now you can go play and set up your game using direct port forwarding. Okay, in this live example, I'm going to be connecting to Kaba78. I'm going to make sure I have loaded my SNES 9X. We're going to play the Super Nintendo version. I've loaded the core. I'm going to load the game. EA Sports in the game. I'm going to go to Start Netplay Host. You can see I've joined as player one. And you can see got connection from, it said name, uh, he must not be registered as a player, and connection as player two. So he's already in. And what he did was just simply find my room and hit the A. He didn't have to go to connection or connect to a uh, host he just found the room and clicked a so let's check this out um, have to find out what team he wants I'm gonna be uh, Detroit he's gonna be Calgary you could see he just moved his player over by himself now on the bottom you can see that somebody just tried, Vico just joined for, as player three because I have it open, but it gave him a warning that he tried to join my game even though he wasn't invited and he was using a different version of something, probably the ROM or something. And, uh, and that's why he, it gave us that error. So that was a good example of what happens when you don't have the same ROM or the same version. So we're playing right now. And you can see that's him. Uh, I'm, I'm Detroit. He's Calgary. Um, and the, it's uh, working very well. But again, I'm direct port forwarded. And uh, it, it gives you much better, much better uh, connection and uh, 
gameplay when you're direct port forward instead of using relay server so hey i hope that helps everybody um and get you started and even if you're not nhl 94 uh and you want to just play any other game whether it's contra or mario uh this is the way to do it and uh, i hope you guys are successful good luck <laughs>